Hello Crafty Clan! Hopefully that's us live. And I can see in the chat that we quite possibly whoop, have a few of you in here. So hope you're all having an awesome day. I'll catch up on the chat. What we're going to do is the third and final part of our needle felted dash hound today we're doing the wire haired dash hound before we get on to that i'm going to have a little chat about the long haired dash hound because i know quite a few people are having problems with that so i thought we'd just have a little troubleshoot on the long haired guy um because there, there's a trick to long hair um but it's not too difficult you just have to practice and blend the colors better than i did but that's it anyway let's see who's who's in the house so we have faith hello there i hope everyone is well on this sunny sunday it is a beautiful day here just now uh well in norfolk it's sunny yes in in almost glasgow it's sunny too bonnie hello there hello everyone hope you're having a lovely weekend indeed it's the weekend again where did that week go <laughs> i would love to say what i've done over the past week but it, it's it's nothing <laughs> i've done nothing um erica on time yippee hello and steffi's in the house hello there good to see you uh lisa hello hello pam and crafty clans awesome <laughs> helen hello there um steffi sorry couldn't make it last week yeah will understood that was absolutely heartbreaking but um yeah great great to see you and sorry for your loss last week um carol hello there and betsy's in the house hello there everybody and Irina, hello um another one of the e-rank angels <laughs> canvas and chroma hello there good morning i'm actually up early enough to be on time awesome hello everyone this is just cherry coke no vodka tempting so it is and no rum either oh voice is going already Right, so before we get on to the wire haired dash hound, I just wanted to do a little talk and let's see if we can see this good on two cameras. Yeah, just wanted to talk a little bit because I know a lot of people are having trouble with the long haired dash hound. Now, when you're doing long haired dog breeds or any breeds, the trick, if you're one, and these dash hounds have a lovely smooth coat, so you want to put on really thin layers it's easier to build up so you put on a thin layer a couple of thin layers rather than great big solid chunks of layers and with these long hair coats they tend to st stick close to the body and then you've got some furnishings as they're called in doggy terms so and it does explain this in the descriptions but i probably jumped through it quite quickly when you're felting on the long hair onto the beast you want to come around and be felting down into the body and they do quick nice tip from the makers was to keep your keep your needle at this kind of angle so you're not felting sort of divots into them you're just felting down nice and smooth to keep that smooth to the body and then flowing and the other thing now you probably shouldn't do this with a felting needle but we know me and the rules of felting um but long hair you can groom once it's on just with a needle a little darning needle or something groom it about if you need to now i wouldn't advise necessarily trimming it unless you really know what you're doing because that'll give a really blunt edge unless the dog unless the breed is trimmed and um, some of them are but you can groom in about with your needle and then just don't felt all the way down but just felt if you're happy with the position of some of them felt a little bit to shape it some more and the same with the head grooming the ears so that these little highlights of color are going in the direction that you want see this one's a bit more out of control You've got to make sure that you've felted on the bits that you're doing fairly firmly, else they'll start to fall off. And you'll probably get some wisps coming off. It's impossible to attach every single hair, but don't go too wild with this, else you'll find out. Um, else they will go bold, which I suppose you can add some more. And then if you're wanting like the tops of the ears, if like spaniels, and I think long haired dash hands, a little bit sort of slimmer at the top of their head and it gets wider more. So we just felt this into place a little bit but leave free there and the same on the chest and just groom it out a little bit um but yeah the the trick is just fine amounts of fur not putting too much on 
and then tack you know make sure you tack it into the place you want groom it about and there you have it um but yeah for the people that are struggling with this just little and often i i have spent forever i actually have another long haired dog sitting here um different types this is a more rough coat with a little beardiness um so that's kind of what we're working on today isn't it we're going to do the the rough haired dash hound but mine are a little bit different but it's just about adding small amounts of coat and building it up until you get what you're looking for okay um so Let's do some magic of editing, or not, because this is all live. So we're working on the final of our three little ducks. If you haven't already seen, um, this is the Maker's subscription monthly subscription box. Excuse the plane that sounds like it wants to land on my house. But it's the Maker's monthly subscription box. And let's actually use the wonderful tool that they gave me. This is the three needle tool. Um, and this is a trio of dash hounds. So the past two weeks we've made the other two. We have made a black and tan, we have made a long hair, and now we're making the rough hair, because there's three different types of coats. <laughs> well, a short hair, a long hair, and a rough hair. Are we call it rough hair? Um, wire hair, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, so if you want to see how I made the duck and the other things that are coming, that is either in the kit or you can watch my video from two weeks past Sunday, the first of these. Um, so we get to the duck and then wait because I didn't want you to watch everything that I've been repeating again. So let's let's see if the, this camera can cope with this. So we're ready. We've also done legs <laughs> and ears <laughs> if this wasn't a live video i could have cut that and made it look like they magically appeared but you'll see in the other video how i make these and for the wire hair we're using the more the lighter color brown the the honey i believe you called it um, don't know <laughs> but stephy's here she can tell us so the lighter color for the legs oh i also oh nelly forgot tail too <laughs> but that's that's the pieces you need if you check back in my video or the makers have this fantastic instructions manual that you get in the kit that is what i'm following along to um so yeah that's where i've got to so if you want to follow along this is the kind of stage you have to get to um yeah there we go i'll just check check the stat then the st the chat then we'll get on to it um Steffi oh your long haired doxy looks amazing thank you so much I would if anyone's following along that was my video last week take more time to blend the colours I say that with every week just because colour blending takes a bit of time to get it beautiful you can use dog dog um slicker brushes to card the fibres I actually have a video on that um but take your time and get a nice blend mine's a little bit a little bit chunky but it gives you the idea anyway and you can see if you blend it even more it'll look even more fantastic um lisa he's looking great or her forgot the gender um i think the long hair one should be a she i don't know why it's she, she's got long hair <laughs> Irina, what a cute dog thank you so much um cj phoenix good morning hello there a uh, canvas omg that little dog is cute it's so cute thank you so much it's definitely yeah um it works better to start off layers from the base up like a wig absolutely so if you were doing this um if you were adding the long hair you start them lower down and then build up so you would start putting in a layer here and then a layer and then a layer or it depends that's roughly what i do for these kind of ones i'll start i'll do the underneath and then build up layers at the side depending on how floofy the dogs are i might build up like layers around like this away as well as you can see so i would do sort of feathering to here and then wrap but they're they're thin layers if you put them on chunky that works for the super fluffy breeds of dogs but more wiry or anything yeah less is more um and Steffi, yeah the last few days to get this trio of dash hounds kit um f it's their subscription box um oh what a beautiful name and i'm not going to be able to say it, say it 
Anza Cena. Can I can I call you Cena? Because I I'm probably not even saying that right. I love your technique. Hi from Mexico. Beautiful name. Um, Emma. Hi everyone. I'm stabbing while I watch. Working on finishing my short hair dash hand today. Awesome. Um, as Cena, I love your work. Thank you so much. <laughs> Faith, fluffy. I love it. That's what my do that's exactly what my dogs are. Fluffy. Yeah, best type. Right. Right, right, right. So, what am I supposed to have done? So far, yep, the first bit is to pop the legs onto the poor dog. So, I'm just having a quick look at the random legs that I've made. Um, I think they're the chunkier and they're the least chunky. So, I'll do the skinnier ones for the front. Again, for different breeds of dogs, different lengths of legs. Also, some dogs have more bendy out legs. They, their chests are wider and everything. So you just look at the breed. But these guys are just having nice straight legs. And I bent the foot in as per the directions and as per what we've done in the past two weeks. So bent, bent the foot in a little bit. So we've got a straight line with a little paw curl curved out. And I'm just going to felt it onto his chest. And again, depending on the breed, they sometimes have um, more chesterly regions. Some breeds have quite deep chests. I think Dashans do kind of have deep chests, but I'm not. I'm not really thinking of that just now. I'm just following what I'm told. Um, but yeah, that actually in the pictures, yes. So yeah, the chest is deeper. So we'll just go back a little bit. See, for anyone that's asking, you totally. You can't really go wrong with needle felting because you can just pull off a bit or cut off a bit and replace it with another bit. <laughs> it's really forgiving. So I put the leg in the wrong place and I just pulled it off and moved it. Um, yeah. Canvas and Chroma. How's everyone's Eatsy sales been in the last couple of months? I recently surprised past my revenue for all of last year despite the horror show of February and March so I must be doing something right awesome I'm so pleased to hear that yeah beating your beating your your year's revenue before we're well we're just past the middle of the year fantastic especially with everything that's going on um I just you've seen last Monday I did a video was Monday. Yeah, I did a video on just a silly little test I'd done. Um, basically, relisting an old expired listing of mine every day for a month. And that really put my sales up. And it's actually, my, sta my sales are still super high. And it's not the listings that I relisted. It's my listings that are already there that are good. But they're all selling crazy. Um, it's actually a, a worry. I'm thinking of putting my prices up in the hope of slowing down. <laughs> um, I certainly I would be freaking out if I'd earned more than I than I usually earn in a year because like Christmas time is my big time and I couldn't cope with doing that. But sales have really in the past month they have really picked up, which is cool. Um, I know some shops are saying they've been quiet. Um, some shops have definitely well, okay, Etsy has has had trouble over the past few days um it's been having trouble it's been down it's had some glitches so people are saying buyers have said they haven't been able to buy and things this will only be a small glitch for a small number of buyers but it still makes a difference um so yeah don't don't freak out too much about a day or two but but yeah overall my month's been really good i hope everyone else is um but I know people who who did super well off the start of all the masks and everything that's been a little bit less although in the UK masks are finally now compulsory I've been ordering so many fun masks <laughs> um, but yes masks are now compulsory so if you're a UK seller I'm going on to a finer needle now if you're a UK seller then masks might be picking up in the UK a bit more um, but they d I think the boost the massive rush they had in America has calmed down because most people who wanted a mask will have a mask although I'm really thinking now is the time for pretty looking masks oh this is going to be a bit of a longer leg dash hound but yeah whatever um this might be the time for more pretty masks 
pubs and clubs and well not clubs clubs aren't allowed to be open yet that's going to be a while but pubs and restaurants and everything are open people are able to go and meet other people I have a couple of friends who have um, met people online dating that haven't met them yet. So they're going to be in places, they're going to be going out to meet people that they've been chatting to for a few months. And they're going to want to look pretty when they have to go into the place wearing a mask or something. So, although obviously you can take the mask off at certain places, um, but you know, masks that coordinate with your aesthetic, your style. Um, are i think are going to be a really pretty cool thing St masks that you can coordinate your going out outfit masks that look nice with your makeup <laughs> i think these are all going to be a thing because masks are going to be what oh something just flew past the sun there <laughs> um so yeah so if if you do do masks there's definitely going to be a a market for for that i've totally gone off tangent haven't i Erica, um, you've already made yours, but you would love the otters and the sloths. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to them as well. That's going to be fun. Uh, Steffi's saying they have perfect wiry wool bats. Absolutely. Yeah, playing around with different types of wool really helps there. Um, I try and make do with what I've got because I, I just have kind of tops in in all the colours I need. But having, I mean, this is a lovely wiry texture so as you can probably see you it, it gives a sort of just even a wiry effect just looking at it rather than the smooth when you can even see that so there's like little variations in color and a little wiriness whereas the bats give a more smooth even color um uh, stone lamb natural black Cracco Merino, and this is honey. I, I don't know, Cracco, I don't know how to say that. Our cappuccino pack has them all. <laughs> awesome, except for the black. Roughed up designs. Awesome name. Um, how many how many hours go into a piece? I'm loving that Jack Russell. Um, oh, thank you so much. Um, well, I did make this guy entirely live did that take what that took like two live streams so it was about three hours i think um with the more the, the jack russell that i made there that i just showed earlier that was probably about five or six hours work but it's five or six hours in front of the tally i i put on a good a good show um and just sat and and watched that i'm trying to remember what i was watching there i don't know but i just I just binge a box set and make a make a creature. Um but thank you so much. Steffi dash hands have deep deep chests. They do indeed, yes. I was more thinking the I think I have to say this. But some breeds have more chesty out the way as well, if you know what I mean. I'm thinking um red setters seem to be getting more and more top heavy. <laughs> Some, someone stop me when I'm saying these things. Pamela, hello there. Oop, chat jumped again. Um, Bonnie, I should get my new sewing machine tomorrow for my birthday. Oh, congrats and happy birthday. Can't wait to make some masks for my friends and family. Oh, fantastic. Yes, that that's if if you can make them for friends and everything too, that's so awesome. Um, I certainly, I really had a struggle to get masks. I discovered the first ones I thought I'd ordered some but there'd been a change in Chrome and PayPal and it was blocking my PayPal pop-up so I thought I'd ordered stuff and it hadn't actually paid so they just cancelled so that was a weird one um so yeah pop-up blockers a bit of a pain um but then I managed to order some and I, I had I had beautiful masks come in from Spain. It really wasn't too bad. Um, had another really nice mask, but it's like giant, so I'm going to have to sew it a little bit. So be careful when you're ordering them if they have size charts or things, because uh, apparently people have bigger faces than me, which they must have like mean faces because I have a giant head. <laughs> um, 
roughed up. How many times have you speared yourself doing this? I can't believe you can do that with Harley looking. <laughs> I'm on edge watching. I know. Who would have thought needle felting an extreme sport, eh? <laughs> um, I don't stab myself quite so often. It, it's going to happen. I'm a little bit more with this new tool that the makers kindly gave to me just because I'm out of practice with it. As as I'm doing more, I'm getting better, but I do just tend to catch a finger on the way in. Um, but this is a slightly more stabby tool to attach these a bit quicker. Um, but in general, I've been doing this for 12 years now, so you get a little more of an idea of where you are in the world. Um, I did used to swear quite a lot. It, it, it wasn't good for if you had company over and you were watching a movie together and I thought I would felt, no, you have to be better. And the other thing, I've I've, I've spoke about this before, so so if you've, if you've heard this one before, go and make yourself a cup of coffee or something. But the other thing I do, when I do touch my finger, well, my the tips of my fingers are probably quite, <laughs> quite solid now they've been stabbed enough times um but i'm not holding on to the tool very tightly i'm not like stabbing in with great force so if it does touch my fingers i'm not really like i just stop um you get in the habit of that as well so um, i might touch my fingers but it's not really causing causing any pain or anything i think that's where a lot of the a lot of the worst injuries come from people is when they're really stabbing super hard um, and holding your death grip on the needle and <laughs> stabbing in. If you're holding nice and lightly and you just stop yourself before you get too stabby, it's not too bad. Um. Oh, Steffi, yes, I saw your knitted masks. <laughs> cool, interesting style. And I think they'll still work enough, so yeah. Canvas, sorry, didn't mean to send you off on a tangent. <sighs> Tangents are great. So I, I live near Glasgow. If anyone's seen Billy Connolly, you'll you'll realise that we we do tend to <laughs> to wander around the topic quite a bit. So yeah, but if if anyone asks me a question and I do a tangent and I don't get around to answering your question, <laughs> please remind me again. It's not deliberate. It's just how my mind works. Um. Canvas saying to Bonnie, be careful once you get the sewing bug. The next thing <laughs> you know, everyone that lives with you is going to be tripping over your massive fabric collection. I think that's going to be the same with every crafter, pretty much, hasn't it? Right, he is that she. He, no, he's wire haired. He's got to be a he. Definitely a bit more leggy, but hey. Um, and then we've got to pop the tail on. Oh, no, ears are next. Um, so it's black ears with a little bit of colouring on them but the ears will go on the same which is slightly facing forward put them on pointing up I always do this as well I'll put on the dog's ears pointing up the way getting the ear set in the right position and everything and then you fold them down um, and then you can set them up and if there is like dash hands here's a bonus bonus tips from me so I would make them a little ear shaped as they go just as I'm holding them like that and then when I fold them down you can sort of get it depends how I mean I think dash hounds have very droopy ears but as you fold it down you can just pinch and get a little kind of wrinkle in the felt because a lot of dogs ears don't just sit flat they have a little a little bit of shape so that adds a little bit to them and the same sometimes they can perk up a little bit so you can push the push the back up just to the dogs have quite expressive ears i'm trying to see if I... <laughs> here i'll share this one with you and this is the actual dog that i was making does have massive ears i've not just gone crazy with that is that not bonkers they're brilliant um but you can see some of the other ear sets. There's an example of, of what I'm saying is I put on an ear and folded it down. It's got a little bit of a wrinkle there. And so they're not just quite hanging down because that's a different breed of dog. And then this guy, whoops, he's wanting to fall over. This guy, I folded it kind of more in half because that's how his ears are. So, yeah, different 
different dogs they all have the same basic ear it just is how much it's folded over how much it stands up how big it how big it is but they're all kind of the same thing they're <laughs> they're all based on the same design that's why i find dogs really easy they're they're all based on the same oh i'm doing that wrong and i there we go they're all based on the same design it's just bigger ears littler ears bigger noses littler noses longer bodies shorter bodies all the same thing um lisa sorry my imagination goes wild at times Ooh, um canvas um I don't know why, but fabric hoarding is especially insidious for some reason. There's an unlimited variety of colours, pat styles, patterns and types, and you want them all. Oh, absolutely. I, I totally understand. Um, when we've been, um, my, myself and my mother, um, when she's been down, we've visited the Creating Craft, not the Creating Craft, um, the Crafts for Christmas and the Hobby Craft show in Glasgow um, sometimes, and I've seen those the stools with the fabrics on them for even just for the fat quarters there's the word i'm looking for just the little bundles of fabric and it's like wow that's so cool and i could buy so many and i don't know i don't have a clue what to do with them i'm i'm not very good at sewing and i yeah i'm not great with fabrics which is odd because i'm a needle felter but <laughs> yeah but i do look at some of them and they're so gorgeous and like you say so many styles and varieties and patterns and feels of the fabric weights of the fabric different things you can do with the fabric totally understand um but i i know so many crafters no matter what they do um they once they get to a certain point you don't just have a craft area you don't just have a craft room i know people who've had extensions built for their extra craft rooms <laughs> it gets crazy um thankfully i just generally stick to the one craft although i am thinking of other things to do i i've, I've been buying some other things to attempt other things but we'll see how that goes <laughs> if i get the time um Steffi, I find I just can't breathe behind a mask. Try different types and don't want to throw away masks. Knitted ones seem to be a compromise, knitting from cotton. Yeah, you've got to do what you've got to do. I totally understand. I I am a little claustrophobic myself and whether it's hay fever or the lurgy that I had earlier in the year that we cannot mention for YouTube monetization purposes. Um but my breathing isn't isn't a hundred thousand percent um anymore um i tend to be fine until i go to the checkout in the supermarket i'm fine walking around but then when i'm starting i just want to get out and it's like Ugh. so i'm coping i'm getting used to it but yeah <laughs> helen you finish up with a shed yep i i have a shed it's not a very good shed though i wouldn't put my stuff in there right let's move on for anyone who hasn't seen it this this is our instructions super good quality right we've done the long hair dash hand we are on wire hair dash hand awesome yum so yes we are going to need um some of this stuff <laughs> where did i put everything i had it all laid out and then i unlaid it out well we need some black probably oh that's where i put it all we need some black and we need some brown um and there is the oh i think i used up okay he's going to be a slightly different color because i used up all of the lighter mm. yeah i have some other colors sitting about here let's let's go with a little bit of this just to add some variety there we go <laughs> my mix of colors um so we've got to first attach the tail i can do that um and i believe we're going to be blending some colors so i should have taken my blendy my dog carding brushes for that but yeah didn't think I say that every week, don't I? I <laughs> someone should come on like 
20 minutes before I start and just be like, Pam, have you got the card and brushes? Have you got scissors? I've got scissors. Have you got scissors? Have you got needles? Have you got eyes? Have you got all the stuff you need? <laughs> a canvas. You went from only needing a small corner of the garage and now taking up an entire wall from door to door in the garage. And the upstairs loft room... Um, for all my crafty things, someone send help. Oh no, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> yeah, you you get a little space, and then you organise the space. That this is how it works. You organise the space, and then you start crafting, and you kind of explode the space a bit. So you spread out into another space. You buy like some extra shelves or a little storage solution, and spread out into a new area a little bit more. And then you use the stuff and explode your craft all over the space again. And you just expand a little bit more. Um, oh, Helen's shed's double glazed so you can work in there. Awesome. My my shed's not very good, I have to confess. Half the roof's kind of blown off. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I probably should get someone to get rid of that. Okay. So, his tail's done. So, we're going to take some of the natural black. Well, I couldn't find the natural black, so I blended some colours into it. Because the natural black has a little bit of colours, and I wasn't reading ahead. Take some of the natural black and a little bit of the honey, which I was already doing. Mix together to create a brindle mix. probably need a bit more black yeah so I'd already kind of started doing that because I couldn't find a natural black which had fibres in it I, I can't keep track of things for like three weeks in a row um, but yeah if you pull and stack then you start to get I've got too much of that colour in there you start to get sort of streaks of colour through it which can give a brindle kind of coat um, which is an awesome effect But because I don't have my carding brushes, I'm too big chunks sometimes. But as you should be able to see, there starts to be little wisps of the lighter colour running through the dark. And the dash sound here is quite brown, tony coloured. You can make your mix darker or lighter with more or less of the two. Exactly, it's your dog. Now take a small batch, cover the join between the tail and the body. So what I'm going to do, because they did specifically mention brindle pattern, which is a it's like tiger stripes on the dog. I love brindle. Um, so I'm going to keep the fibres going in this kind of direction. And I'm just going to, that's a bit chunky, there we go. So keep it in that kind of direction and lay that on. I have, I was running out of the core a little bit because I made my first dog really giant really. So he's got quite skinny hips. So I'm actually going to chunk him up a little bit just by putting a little bit more over here. There we go, he's got a little bit of thigh muscle as well there. Where are we going after this? Okay, so after this I'm going to make a lighter brindle mix. Um, so it's basically just taking this and a bit more of this to make a tummy colour. So I'll do that just now. And then I'll be able to put that all on together. Um, so, how's everybody's week been? Um, yeah, what have you been up to? As I say, like, nothing this week. I was thinking, you know, what can I tell you? What have I been doing the week about just working, <laughs> working and more working? It's been so cool. Um... That's two weeks now I can do my dog training. So I've been seeing some clients, which has been so nice. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I've not been out. I've not met anyone. I've not done anything. 
wonderful <laughs> so there we have our lighter brindle for the tummy so I'll start putting that in as well and then I can blend that in and it's saying we'll leave the chest uncovered for now so just going along with tummy and up to the front legs but not onto the chest yet again blend these better and the good thing with the brindles is I find as you felt it the colours sort of blend together a little bit as well and you can add like if if you didn't like that much of the light colour being there you could take off a little bit more black take a little wisp and lay it in the right direction and you're gonna that just tones it down a little bit if that's what you want um, and I need some more well I already made a darker <laughs> a darker brindle a bit but more of that to go along with top um, yep so using the darker min brindle cover from the rear to the front along the top and the sides here you have a chance to shape it some more um, remember and make sure the waist is tucked while the chest is deep yep so look always look at the type of dogs you're creating and figure out where you want to add some more muscle as as they say make sure the chest is the chest stays deep but the waist we've got a nice skinny waist so i'm just can i pop that on here and um, how far and this is going right up the neck as well And then I'll felt it on and I'm about to, about to actually concentrate on chatting again instead of concentrate on getting this done. Um, I'm just tucking it behind the ears as well. You can do, um, because this is going to be, this is such a different colour from the undercoat, you could put on the ears after you've started doing this so you don't have white patches, but either way it works. There we go, and I shall get this felted in. Um. Oh, Pamela, thank you. Um, remember to thumbs up if you appreciate Pam's time and instruction. Yes, thank you so much. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like this. If you hate it, give us a thumbs down. Really don't mind, it's all interaction. <laughs> but thumbs up are nicer. Um, Brindles here is basically a streaky mix. Absolutely. Um, that if you have a carding machine you can make brindle super easy and um, just put in little little wisps of color on i that's i really want a carding machine one day see if they could just make carding machines that are like tiny <laughs> that i could just do little dog brindle mixes that would be perfect uh pamela dressed up in edwardian rooseveltian clothing for a virtual tea yesterday oh awesome yay um got dressed up for a virtual tea i'm impressed i i went to a virtual club last night but i was in my pajamas <laughs> we're actually just talking to friends last week about when we are allowed to go out again properly now i'm not the kind of person that wears high heels or anything very often but will we all be able to walk in heels again <laughs> or anything like this it's been it's been four months since I've worn non-elasticated clothing. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. And and yeah, um, makeup's been only for camera <laughs> rather than actual real world makeup. I mean, I'm not very much of a girly girl, but I, I'm probably going to be even less now, <laughs> even less capable. So totally impressed you get got dressed up for a virtual a virtual tea party that sounds so much fun Ooh. 
Uh, Helen, you braved walking a mile to your nearest shop, putting shopping on my walker for the mile walk home. Oh, good job. Yeah, that's cool. It's, it's nice to get out and do stuff. Um, but yeah, two mile walk there and back. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> good job. Um, Bonnie, you've used the mocha, mi mocha mix in the past to make brindle staffies and it was perfect. Fantastic. Yes, it's once you find the right colour for certain breeds of dogs, like cling on to it. Um, I've really, the ones, I don't have any of it up here with me. The colour that I found the most difficult to get hold of. So maker, <laughs> I actually have to order in from Canada just now. But is a really good um, long hair, what's the word, Labrador retriever. That kind of sandy, really light yellowy colour everything i've got you know i've millions of times everything i've ordered i mean like this is similar but it's a it's it's a rough <laughs> um i want nice nice tops in the color everything i've found tends to have too much yellow in it um i can't find anything to give an example but i get i've ordered so many and i've spoke to individual people and everything and they always they go yes i have the perfect color and i buy it and they send it out and it is always mustard it's never quite that you know that labrador color especially to blend into it um to do blends because the the dogs are harder than you think their ears are a little bit darker and then it blends into lighter colors on their underneath um, and getting that perfect colour is not easy. Um, oh, Canvas, your brother sent me his DSLR camera, and so I've been learning real photography, updating my Etsy photos, and I can't believe how much better it makes my products, the f product photos than the tablet I was using. Absolutely. You can do fantastic with your phone or with your tablet or anything like that, but still if you learn how to use a decent camera it does make a difference and it's fun i i'm geeky i i liked um learning how to how to use all the different settings um but yeah of course the they it, it would be very wrong if they weren't better because they're far more expensive and um, there's a, there's a lot to use, whereas with the with the tablets, generally we're just pointing and letting it decide for us. So yeah, good job, um, <laughs> Jim Morgan. Lovely Sunday morning ASMR. <laughs> hello, hello there. All right, what's the next thing we've got to do? Okay, now mix some natural black with some hair brown. Um, I don't think this is the right colour, but this is the one that I've got sitting about because I've muddled up my colours. Um, <laughs> but this just gives a different colour. I'm going to actually add a tiny bit of this in as well to t tie them together because I'm not using the right colours, so I'm just doing my best. <laughs> Um, but this is for his chest. I think it's supposed to be a lighter colour rather than a darker colour, but... Know the rules, break the rules. <laughs> He's still going to be awesome. Um, but, oh, sorry, we can all still see. Uh, next, return to the darker brindle mix. Um, to cover the top of the head. Awesome. So this we're coming. I'm going to put in a little bit of this brown to tie in with what I just did with the chest because I'm wrong. <laughs> but you're not wrong. Um, when you're following these, I'm sure the makers would tell you as well. Um, if you have a dash hound if you have a particular dog you want to model it on then totally go look at the colors of the actual dog follow what you're given here but look at the colors of the actual dog and work on making it like that as well i'm pretty sure i'm using the wrong colors in this but it's still going to look cool <laughs> um Go over the ridge of the snout 
this area needs to be broad and flat. All right, so we will broad and flat here. <laughs> I'm just going to take a minute to smooth this out some more. Um, I'm going to cover up just under the ears and because we're coming in to make it wiry soon. We're we're rattling through this. We're nearly there, um, really. But I'm just covering up little bits here. But yes, I'm pretty sure I've mixed up my light colours, so this isn't perfect. But it's actually still kind of cute. Okay. Um. Oh, wow. The sun has definitely come out, and it's getting warm. <laughs> um. chat really moved um <laughs> uh faith you've had a bit of a funny old week to be honest my mum is now in remission my doggy bay got grassy oh grassy seed stuck in his foot and cost me a fortune to get it out and my son's now <laughs> learning naughty words sorry about your dog glad to hear about your mum that's a good good thing um yeah you poor dog grass seed is such a problem or can be um yeah so glad glad you got that sorted but sorry it cost a fortune and um shouldn't laugh but your son's learning naughty words i have to admit um years ago my friend's little kid um she was just oh she was tiny she'd barely learned to talk and um, her dad asked her to do something and she was at that stage where everything she was saying she was just no 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 that's about all she could say and he asked her to do something and she accidentally when she turned back to say no to him her hand went up but her hand went up with only the middle finger extended by a complete accident and of course we all b erupted into laughter because it was like the funniest thing that and we totally should not have laughed at that because there was months of this tiny little girl flipping everyone the bird after that. <laughs> children are a nightmare <laughs> but it it was hilarious at the moment and then not so hilarious afterwards um uh, Bonnie saying gosh faith that sounds like a crazy week I know doesn't it you need a little felt along and a nice cup of tea <laughs> absolutely yes take some time to chill out and yeah it's, it's been it's been the week hasn't it um and G Morgan saying faith that's quite a week completely agree um Steffi well faith did wonder why you'd been quiet on the needle front felting front yeah that's that's a definite time of life getting in the way um faith now sitting in the front garden watching the kids play at the park cupper in hand <laughs> crossing my fingers he doesn't suddenly say the rude word that he's learned at the top of his voice the little scamp <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and the more that you don't want him to say it the more you make a big deal of it the more he's gonna love saying that word oh actually yes another one <clears throat> um i oh many when we were really quite little um our our neighbor's kid um was quite a lot younger than us and i remember reasonably sure it was me it might have been my sister but i'm reasonably sure it was me told him to go and tell my sister that she was a rude word um a rude word for me at my age so it wasn't horrific but still and we thought it was the hilarious thing he went up to my sister said this she laughed i laughed he laughed everyone found it great until a couple of days later um, my neighbour came running up to me and gave me quite a scalp across the back of my legs um, because he had gone up to a stranger in the street, went out with her and she didn't know I'd taught him this and he'd gone up to a stranger in the street and said these very words to her so yeah 
I'm sure it was me so long ago like that was 40 years ago <laughs> near enough so I don't completely remember but yeah back in the days when your neighbours could give you a scalp when you'd done things wrong <laughs> um, Emma are the cream South American tops in this maker's box still too yellow I was trying to look for I've, I think I've used up all of that in my last thing I was trying to find them um, but if yes I think it's this kind of color as you can see this yeah, the the very lightest one is just a fraction too light and the other one's just a fraction too yellow but they're close <laughs> they are the closest I've seen in the UK I've really been struggling I'm I'm a perfectionist with Labrador colors I don't know why um, and this whoa this isn't too bad at all, but I need some tops. <laughs> um, uh, G. Morgan, two golden doodles moved in two doors down. Big difference in colours. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's the one thing that I've found the most difficult with making dogs is getting the right colours. It's super hard. And what's even harder, right, I'm... I'm generally working from photographs and people will send you like four photographs of their dogs all in different light and especially the kind of red colored dogs different lights the color changes completely and <laughs> it's not the first time I've I've had to send a message back with like a whole pile of my different colored wool going which one do you want me to use because they are all the right color for one of your photographs <laughs> Um, oh Bonnie saying you never posted the photo of your staff you'll have to post it later absolutely yeah got to see the staffy brindle coats are pretty hard to make it takes a bit of practice because if I'm not trying to be perfect here but bigger chunks really show up but if you go too fine it just about vanishes away as well getting this especially a staffy or a greyhound brindle is really hard um, <laughs> it takes practice um, roughed up you looked up mini carding machines uh, the ones you saw were at least large dinner table size and and to make matters worse there's a brand called mini factory ones so yes tiny ones do not exist <laughs> i think you can get a sort of three four times the size of a placemat i realize you can't actually see my hands here you can get a chunky monkey but i would like a real dainty one because yeah i don't use that I, i'm making like this is a large dog for me so i don't need much card <laughs> But yeah, we'll see. Um, so uh, anyone who knows how to do that, <laughs> feel free. Um, G. Morgan saying to Faith, he'll, her son will use his swear words at every opportunity if he thinks he can use it against them. Oh, tell him it, he, it hurts what he loves best. Oh, yes, hopefully he's a nice kid. <laughs> I'm sure he's a lovely kid. And yes, if you, if you say they're hurtful rather than naughty. I think hurtful tends to be a bit better, doesn't it? Um, I just want to get this coat smoothed down. I'm loving the shape, actually. It looks really cute. I'm probably using the entire wrong colours, so sorry, makers. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have not been organised in my pile of floof. I That's just some... <laughs> <laughs> the floof I've got um, because I do my felting and then I have to rush off and do other kinds of work so I need to I need to get organized on that so sorry if these are the wrong colors I'm using um, oh Faith sorry I'll be back firing on all cylinders tomorrow oh I'm sure Steffi doesn't doesn't mind either um uh, by the way, swearing ain't my thing, but I have teenagers who apparently do. Yeah, that, that's a teenager thing. <laughs> oh, Steffi, not been well this week and had to... Oh, skipped. Stop skipping chat. Um, and had to keep reminding myself that other ailments are still about. Kept reading up on 
the lagerlergy system symptoms and taking temperatures but not fever just headache and aches oh i know it's so difficult i because i said um last weekend i went out saw a friend was in a place where it's busy and um, we sat outside a restaurant and had coffee and homemade donuts which were lovely but yes yeah, so all this week especially with my hay fever being bad i was like is my breathing okay am i everything okay and i've probably already had it but i was still freaking out a little bit um i think the thing that kind of worries me sort of the worst is early on quite a few of my friends had it and it just came on so quickly so i'm kind of like Ooh. but yeah that's that's the week and i'm definitely healthy <laughs> but i i get it i think yeah we we all the slightest thing that's kind of like is this it is this it because we're all kind of waiting for it um and yeah there are other illnesses <laughs> out there um i i suppose that um colds and flus i mean it's the summer which they're lessened anyway but i suppose as all staying away from people have made them less anyway um, that must have lessened them too but yeah when i go out and meet people i am very much like yeah, am i gonna get sick <laughs> so i think we're all many of us are gonna be have that paranoia for quite a while i'm not so bad actually meeting my clients outside working with dogs not a problem and i had i, I nearly forgot i did have the most awesome week this week in that i worked with four puppies <laughs> pretty cool um so that that's an awesome week <laughs> but yeah I, I totally get it you can i think we all are slightly hypochondriacs okay this is definitely my skinniest skinniest dog right next next bit oh i've got to make a news i can do that <laughs> and this little guy seems to have quite a big nose actually i'm going to not follow the instructions here <laughs> because i see what's kind of coming up next so i'm going to try something going off piste i'm going to make the nose but i'm not going to attach the nose until i've put the fuzzies on <laughs> okay so sorry guys i'm going off piste but this this is just how how i would do this which i know is probably very wrong because I know every time I've followed your instructions they've worked perfectly but I like to do my own thing. <laughs> so there's his nose which will go on later but he's got some white, he's got some fluff to go on first. Um, and and this is the point to add the eyes as well. So just shaping off his head a little bit more. I don't know if you guys can see but actually i think this is this one's having the best shaped head <laughs> because i took my time and made the base a lot slower because it was off camera so i could sit down and do that um but that does look better which is a shame it's got like the dainty little face and i'm gonna have to put a beard on him <laughs> um eyes so i'll put that, put them in about here Okay, um... Oh, I think I've got... Ha! Ah, <laughs> fleece just tickling my nose there. Oh, that's annoying. Um, Bonnie, I think it's all the different ways we break the rules that give them their character and why they all look so different. Absolutely. Needle felton. Um, even when we're all following the same pattern. I mean, even with the butterflies. I'm looking for a butterfly. It's in the back. That's on the back here, on my shelf. Well, you can just about. You can just about see the butterfly back there. Um, even the butterflies that we all had the exact same colour fibre. We all had a printed out piece of fabric to felt on top of. And it was basically painting by numbers. And we all managed to make something that looked slightly different. <laughs> so, awesome. Um, but yeah, needle felting by... By the way it's made, everything has to be one of a kind. There's no way around it. Um, so that's super cool. And yeah, if we all go a little bit off piste, even better. Right. My eyes. I don't know why. I can't see really little eyes on this one. 
it might not look good but it's what I'm in the mood for today and again yeah different sizes of eyes make a difference to the look uh, if um, yeah don't forget if you're going to be selling these or well keeping them for any length of time and <laughs> not just popping them up on a shelf behind you and uh, glue in the eyes make sure they're safe um, the makers kit has little beads that you can use as eyes in this bit but yeah glue them in okay I think it's just gonna be yeah we're doing the wire hair next so I'm gonna finish off firm in this properly let's let's make a proper one that I'm actually kind of pleased on rather than a f half finished one um oh G Morgan you've been fighting the headaches too but I think it's allergies and the fact the streets under siege getting new pipes yeah oh allergies are pretty bad this year I definitely agree with that um on on the plus side all the because the council didn't cut all the grass so much there's been some lovely wildflowers and everything but since they've decided to cut not decided since it's been safe for them to come out and cut everything that has really kicked my hay fever up like a hundred percent um so definitely struggling with that yes so allergies are a nightmare hey, um Lisa, upcycled a wooden pallet, designed and printed my shop name on it, um, and whilst watching along, I'm now adding foam flowers. Awesome to add dimensions. We'll post pics later if it looks okay. I'm sure it will. That sounds awesome. Great idea. See, it's always cool to hear what crafty things people are doing. Um, Lena, hello there. So good to see you. Um, yay, made it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh, just skipped. Jeez, we rushed, rushed home and straight away logged in. Oh, Lena, how lovely! Well, it's great to see you. Um, Canvas and Chroma, my cat Morticia. I approve. <laughs> my cat Morticia looks totally black in normal light, but when she's in the sun, suddenly she turns bright orange. Yep, um, black hairs and red hairs, and it, they, they can all really when they catch the light they can show so many different colors so yeah if you if you had to make your cat you have to think about what which which shade of your cat do you want and morticia brilliant um uh, g morgan have you tried brushing two curry combs together to get the roving mix I think it was curry brushes I used to use for making hair from wool yarns yeah um dog slicker brushes are very similar to curry combs um and I have dogs <laughs> but I remember many years ago for a short while I worked in a stable so I do I do know about curry combs <laughs> absolutely um but yeah um good idea with that too I might I might search online and see what different types of animal brushes and things there are there um because yeah the different types yeah curry combs used to be fun um, I remember every every morning out there brushing down all of the horses it takes a lot longer to brush a horse than a dog although speaking of that my my dog Mia is being a nightmare to groom just now um so the horses at least stood still they didn't constantly try and turn around and see what you were doing behind them <laughs> oh Steffi sorry my wi-fi is playing up oh nightmare um love your wire hair also love it when everybody uses their creative freedom I didn't think you would mind <laughs> um but yeah absolutely we all have to find our own style everything you make is going to be different but you you start to find your own style and your things look more your things than anybody else after after a bit of practice you kind of settle into a we don't even say it just happens you get a style <laughs> and i i like to think that now like if someone saw a picture of one of my dogs they would recognize it's one of mine because of my style and the same with with other people there's certain artists i just look at i'm like yeah i know totally who made that that's amazing <laughs> 
Uh, hopefully mine unfortunately mine aren't quite oh that's one of pam's that's amazing but hopefully they make people smile or sadly occasionally a little bit cry um but <laughs> but yeah I, I i hope i have my own style at least um uh, g morgan saying is your cat covered in black guard hairs and an orange undercoat yeah it can be but also it's the way the light penetrates the hair shaft as well um <clears throat> because i i know all of this from a hair bleaching experiments <laughs> um and also you'll see in the summer a dog or cat that's outside a lot the black bits of their fur especially the tips that hit the sun more often they'll often start to go a red color and that's because the underneath the, the base color of the black is actually red so as it bleaches out a bit um you start to see the red so the same when the sun hits it it kind of reflects the light through it and it shows the the more underneath color a little bit so they're not black black they're kind of a really 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 dark <laughs> red also it is black but it's red underneath it's the same when people here we go a hair bleach hair coloring tutorial because i totally need to do my hair again but if you've that that's why a lot of people when they try and bleach their hair when they try and color their hair at home it goes really brassy or they don't quite get the color that they want because when you bleach your hair that we've often got like orange undertones to our hair so you have to realize that <laughs> before you you carry on with the other color um which is i i just make it easy with mine that's why i've got blue blue one color and the the red has a lot of blue in it as well and that neutralizes the undertones it does mean when <laughs> the, these bits are growing in the sun bleaches them to their kind of orange color and then when i wash my hair the blue dye blends a little bit into the yellow and it makes it go kind of white and everyone's like your hair's super gray now I'm like probably but no that's <laughs> that's color theory happening there um oh, every time i settle down to read something the chat skips uh, Steffi, your teenagers swear like there's m more tomorrow <laughs> like there's more to like there's no tomorrow and um, being german I admit it doesn't feel so bad for me only in english in german never oh i i have some german friends i i i have to admit like like with the child like a very small child accidentally flicking the bird i have to admit i really love um people swearing in foreign languages it's ridiculously hilarious <laughs> i shouldn't say that but it is and i get what you mean actually like swearing in actual german w would seem more offensive where it's a, it's a bit funny in a different language but when I was at uni, there was lots of foreign exchange students, um, and they had the monster book of like converting to English, a translation book, as it were. Um, but yes, I, I do remember the one. The one guy, he broke a lamp or something, and he's like, "Merd!" And then you see him. He grabs his book and flicks through it, and then looks up and goes, "Shit!" It was the funny. I probably just got demonetized for that or whatever. It was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> just watching him literally translate a swear word for himself. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, oh, roughed up. Found a mini ten centimeter wheel carding machine. Oh, on eBay Germany. <laughs> I won't tell you the price. Yeah, that's the other problem. But oh, ten cent. Yeah, that sounds like like the perfect I, i'm measuring <laughs> i'm measuring on the little thing on here that sounds like the perfect size but okay uh, <laughs> i won't tell you the price sounds scary but you sent the link in facebook so thank you i'll have a look at that uh, afterwards <laughs> it sounds awesome and also like 10 centimeters that that sounds like you could almost make a kind of doll's house set up for a felting factory <laughs> or something i ridiculously like mini tools um i i remember like years ago what looking at some of the jewelry making tools they've got like a table saw that's about 10 centimeters 
and I, ju I just saw that and I was like, you could do like James Bond scenarios for tiny dolls or something. <laughs> That's just like my first thought when I see these ridiculously expensive <laughs> miniature power tools. So yeah, but oh, that sounds so cute. Um, right, shall we get on to the next bit? Um, so I'm going to take some of this. And a little bit less. I think this is the hair brown. I don't think this is the hair brown. Let's let's just pretend. We're just going to mix some of these colours together. Um, this is going to make his moustache. It definitely it seems redder in the picture. So I'm going to take some more of this red colour. And we're going to make a blend. And yeah, I think all we've got... Oh, we're, I'm seeing how much of this I'm going to need. I think we've got to do a little bit on his paws. How cute. Um, so I'm going to take some more. Take a bit of time to blend up this colour. Because <laughs> um, that's going to be his moustache and beard and eyebrows and feet. Cool. Ooh. My mouse got covered in... Um, fluff there um always say there's no right or wrong way no needle felting police absolutely yeah i mean needle felting is still so new as well but there's no right people say how firm should it be felted how how this what should we do here um so yeah <laughs> there, there's no right or wrong and there did used to be like because you can also do, there There are people who do what's called wool wrapping instead of needle felting and they make these most beautiful um, sculptures doing that. And there used to be so much conversation, you know, like you're doing that wrong, you've got to felt it more, that's not needle felted and stuff. I was like, it doesn't matter. You're using wool, you're using a felting needle, on you go. And yeah back back in the in the old days thankfully people are a lot more forgiving now but there used to be people that really hated on anyone who would like do a little bit shading with chalks or makeup or whatever it had to all be wool had to be colored wool probably hand dyed yourself because people are purists <laughs> so it's absolutely ridiculous it doesn't matter um i totally love to doing you've seen this you've seen this guy before but i do love him I loved more than anything making this little my Lord Squiffy who needs dusting um, but mixing the polymer clay with the soft felt and the fake leather stuff and everything I loved that kind of mixed media thing I think I think the kind of juxtaposition with the soft needle felting and then all sorts of different fabrics I really love that so yeah there's there's definitely no right and wrong okay so we're going to take a little bit oh that's a bit stripey needle felt it onto the side of the muzzle okay yep so we're making now I'm going to do because these are this is a little long because I think I've used the wrong fibres so I should used to do this last week I'm just going to cut it and then do a little bit of blendy there so I don't have such a long wispiness but it's still pretty long and it's not quite got a blunt edge but it's got a little bit um, that's probably enough for the snoot and actually now I want a little bit more I'm looking I'm looking at the diagram here which I haven't been able to get in the <laughs> get in the view. I'm running out of space. So I'm just trying to decide what's the best, what's gonna how much of everything I need. So I'm gonna because that's a little bit long again, I'm looking at where this needs to go. It's going up up to the muzzle. So I'm gonna felt that on up the way. this is a little bit too long and then felt it over so 
so that's a nice straight line. I could have added black over it as well. Um, and the same on this side, just trying to, when it folds, it will be the same length. My biggest problem with dogs is symmetry. I'm not very good at making each side symmetrical. And how much you want this fuzzy up, it depends. The same as what we did with the long hair. I can felt that down a bit to calm it. Um, and I'm also going to wrap a little bit under his chin because I didn't colour that yet. So mine's not been too crazy. I've tucked some of it in, but I'm still leaving some a little loose. And where did I put his little nose can go on now. <laughs> so I wrapped some around the front. So we see we've got a little bit of black coming down. We've got fuzzies at the side and then a nose. We are so close to him being done. This one's been a nice, easy one. Um, Steffi's small eyes are okay as you only see the twinkle from under the bushy brows. Absolutely. Um, Canvas and Chroma. Oh, love you so much. Morticia and his, her sister Gomez, who we're told was a boy by the people who gave us, but the vet said us straight by the time he had the name so it already stuck. Gomez is a girl. Fantastic. Oh, Lena, thank you. Don't forget to hit the like button for Pam. 29 views and only 17 likes. Oh, thank you so much. Let's, let's, I, I can't see those numbers. Oh, no, we're, we're up to 19 likes. Come on, more likes. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Uh, G Morgan, um, years ago, a friend that was trying to look like Andy Warhol bleached his lovely black <laughs> came out bright orange she was stuck with it fun guy <laughs> brilliant yep that's that's exactly what happens it's really really hard to lift super black hair you have to bleach it several times <laughs> so yeah if you have really black hair it's not going to be an easy thing bright orange is more likely right so that's why i left his nose because if i hadn't i would have had to work around his nose so popping the nose on after it just made it a little bit for me I always leave the nose till the end which generally right I want a finer needle which generally means that it looks really terrible right until you pop the nose on and then it just finishes it up um, but there we go and then we've got to put his smile on some more black where's the black there we go um, A little bit of a smile and what I'm going to do because this is a kind of moustache and beard I'm going to separate out some bits so they don't get caught underneath the smile so it can kind of poof out and felt that smile underneath the moustache a bit hopefully you'll see in a second what I mean So it doesn't go all the way round, there's some beard poking out the side. I'm just going to brush that a little to fuzzy it up some. Because he's wire haired. <laughs> there we go, and we've got to add. Um, that's adding some colour. Yeah, we, um, if you haven't used eyes like mine, you can add some of the little brown to to make the eye colour. Um, so if you'd had a little black bead, you would add some of the red brown there to show up the colour of the eyes. But I've got a brown eye. Um, we've done. Oh yeah, we could add 
a little bit more I probably should have actually been reading um, but we can give him a little bit of a beard to come in below his mouth as well I should have done this before I put the mouth on but I'm not reading things very well so a little bit of a goatee that's cute <laughs> And he needs some fuzzy eyebrows. Okay, right. I'm going to be naughty and do something different with this. It's not naughty. So I'm taking quite a long bit. Probably not this long. And I'm felting a line. So I've got a little... <laughs> that is awesome. I just want more fuzzy eyebrows. similar here it won't be the same because I can't do symmetrical so it's kind of folding it in half I'm just felting that down in a line above his eye Pam don't poke needles at your eye when you're talking on camera you'll freak people out um, so they're kind of sticking out quite a bit cute <laughs> this is how I do schnauzer eyebrows it's not quite right for this this dog so you can trim them or anything else but I just wanted super fuzzy eyebrows and then his eyes are really just peeking out a little glint entirely sure it's quite a dash hound anymore but I just got carried away <laughs> I can tame that in a little bit there we go um Oh, tiny wisps to the top of the ears to make them appear less black. Can do. I'm going to dive in and look at the actual picture. Can't really see, but... Right, I'm going to leave his feet just now while I felt over the body and get it a bit firmer and tidy up a bit here, but he's <laughs> there we go, he's kind of there. Right, I'm going to check the chat and just firm him up and then I'll give you a look at all three. Um, oh wow, chat, stop jumping. Um, canvas and chroma there are no right or wrong answer answers when you make things making things is so personal never let anyone tell you you're doing it wrong it doesn't matter what you make <laughs> thank you so much you're so right and if it makes you happy then you've made it right um Bonnie, oh, <laughs> OMG, he's adorable. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I think he's got a cuteness, doesn't he? His beard's getting a bit out of control. But <laughs> yeah, I think he's come good. I was going to say I'd probably trim away some of the fuzzies, but no, he's supposed to be fuzzy. <laughs> Need to use a firmer needle. 
Oh, Steffi, thank you so much. Loving the wire hair. He was the favourite. Yeah, wire hairs are so much fun in, like, every breed. Um, I'll try. Yeah, this is kind of... I've tamed it in a bit more, but you can see for a, a schnauzer... To, I don't think... I think this is a schnauzer cross, hence the massive ears. But you can see the, the way you lay in the beard and the eyebrows is pretty similar. Um, just more of them for different breeds. So once once you get to grips, it's just like different textures of the fur laying it in. But for long hair, you've got a beard that goes down the way and moustache that comes off the side, eyebrows that come up. And if you were doing even bigger, even longer haired dogs, all you would add is coming up from the centre and curving over gives you more eyebrow deedness. <laughs> um, so what I would do with a dog like that is you take a tiny pinch and start at the outside and then moving further up the eyes and then the bit from the centre. I don't know if I'm making sense. I will actually make some videos on doing these things but because dogs is what I do every day. <laughs> um, and this has been fun because this is not exactly how I would make it, so it's challenged me to do something different. Um, Faith, he's amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I think he's rather cute. <laughs> he looks like an old tired dog. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the wire hairs do tend to, and yeah, how you. How you do your eyebrows make a world of difference. But yes, there's those beards and everything. <laughs> um, hi there, Lily Tree. Um, he's gorgeous. Oh, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Canvas and Groma. He's had, he's had a good life. <laughs> oh, Steffi, thank you. He's a perfect head and a lovely shape all over. Yeah, he's um, def he's the one I've spent the most time on. So it it just look. The rest of you, you're not sitting on camera making these things. Take the time to make the parts. Um, possibly, you know, shape up the the thighs a little bit. Make them a little bit more chunky. Keep the waist little and everything. But, yeah, if you take the time. <laughs> the instructions really work. Um, and Carol, gorgeous with his eyebrows. Thank you so much. I do... I do love me an eyebrowsy dog. It really just adds character to do things like like that. There we go. And another th another another cheat to add character: tilt the head. <laughs> that always helps. And if they're looking up, you tilt the head. They just look a little bit cuter. Um, Roughed up. He looks like my friend's Patterdale Terrier cross dash and oh, what an awesome sounding mix. Yeah. Um, Steffi, they do have bushy eyebrows similar to the Schnauzers. Yeah, a lot of what, I, what I've discovered, a lot of these small breeds, when, when you're making, not quite dash hounds, but a lot of the, the small breeds, the, the hair the main difference is just the colouring of it or maybe it's smoother or slightly more trimmed but the hair all grows out in the same direction so. <laughs> oh Jennifer is so, so cute you're a schnauzer mum ah oh, awesome I do love I do love a schnauzer um, Helen thank you so much he's gorgeous love him Irina thank you he's, he's a real beauty thank you well that is us actually done um, I've definitely happiest with this little guy <laughs> i think he, but all of them it's an awesome kit um you just have to spend spend the time um and not rush through it talking to a camera like i did but <laughs> now that's cute i will <laughs> put them all together very cute right let's go full face three dogs yep so there's still a couple of days left you can get get these kits not sponsored but <laughs> but um links in the description of the video um yeah but the kit i still have some some wool left over so definitely enough to make the three dogs watch the videos before so you see the mistakes that i made or at least actually read the thing um but we started off 
in week well no i think this is week four isn't it yeah we started off the first week just making the body shape and then we colored this little guy the black and tan smooth hair um he's a little more chunky and a little shorter so he's like a little puppy and then we did the long hair oops i'm pulling out some of the hair now then we did the long hair take your time to blend the hair but it's an awesome fun tutorial um good to practice doing long hair because that does take a bit of practice so don't feel bad if you struggle with it just use small amounts and build up rather than putting too much on and finally <laughs> i think the ones that have the most character wire hairs have definitely have character um i love the gnarly colorful coat as well that's really cool um but yeah that's them um so just gonna another five minutes in the chat and then i'll leave you to it um jennifer are these your kits no they're not at all these kits are the monthly makers the monthly subscription box from the makers the link is in the description of this video and the makers are in here steffi is with the makers and i'm sure she'll drop her link in a second but these are subscription boxes you can sign up for them um uh, every month you get a new project or in this case three projects and you can cancel or skip a month anytime um and we i i have signed up this is not sponsored i buy the kits myself um and yeah every month we do the subscription box oh hitting the camera um i believe it's the sloths wall hanging next next month so looking forward to that um yeah carol a trio of beauties thank you so much helen they look beautiful together thank you faith thank you so much for joining us this has been fun um and Steffi, yep yeah, thanks for the link right guys i will leave you to it you have oh carol um thank you pam for going through the dash and kit with us really enjoyed it thank you i had fun making it as as it's dogs that i do it was great fun to to do a project that i felt confident i could at least make something decent with well while we're here we should we should give them their home where are these guys gonna go um up on this shelf there we go I have some of my <laughs> some of my creations that I've been making from kits are are up on the shelf, right? So that's us for this time, uh, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Have an awesome week. Um, keep an eye out. I have no idea what videos I'm going to be having this week because, uh, yeah, um, but I'm sure they'll be great. <laughs> have an awesome week. Thank you, guys. Thank you, my crafty clan, and I'll see.